Hi, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Today we're going to veneer a speaker. Many of us like to do projects around the home, whether it be putting in a flower garden, retiling your shower, or shaving your dog's fur to look like a lion or panda. It can be very satisfying and fun. You can also document your journey on social media and prove to your friends that you're capable of more than just putting numbers in boxes at work. Many of us like to make speakers from either kits or all by ourselves. Oftentimes, the material used to make the speaker cabinets is called MDF. MDF is from the devil and is a wood-like material made from wood fibers or particles and glue or resin from equestrian animals. Then it's put under an immense amount of pressure and heat in the fourth level of hell. Since MDF is evil, it's hard to make it look like anything other than a third grader's art project unless you glue a piece of real wood to the exterior. It's kind of like plastic surgery for your speakers. But instead of it looking bad, like if aliens engineered a human and then were real lazy about it and looked at it and they're like, that's fine, send it down, a veneered speaker actually looks like a cube made from a tree. So grab a cup of coffee, some real thin wood, maybe some glue and some patience, and let's veneer a speaker. Wow, that was difficult. I actually had to write that out and then I didn't get it right, so I actually had to do it like multiple times. Real big pain. I like just turning the camera on and talking to it. Okay, so MDF is horrible. I hate it. Why do I hate it? Because I've tried about three or four different ways to finish it and it never looks good. All right, so this is Duratex and you can see, well, other side, you can see like the seams coming through and this is, this is after I've sanded it like a bunch. This is Duratex, okay? Um, it's fine, I guess. Um, but you have to do a ton of prep and even when you do a ton of prep, it still doesn't look great. It's just, it's, I don't know. It's just time consuming. Okay. Then I tried to buy some vinyl flooring. Okay. And that looked okay. And if you get like a piece of 12, 24 by 12 piece of vinyl flooring and then cut it down, it'll look pretty good. You're still going to see a seam though on the top, but it looks way better than this okay all right then i was like you know what i'm just gonna buy some veneer okay because i've veneered another speaker before so this is actually peel and stick cherry okay this is actually the front baffle maybe no this is the back all right that's the port all right peel and stick veneer okay i got this uh from woodcraft it's a local wood shop and it came in a strip of 24 inches by 96 inches, okay? So this one's done. How I started it was, I took some measurements, okay? So what, what I wanted to do is I wanted to run, and actually this is the front. <clears throat> All right, so I wanted to run the grain up and then over and then down, kind of like continue the grain. The thing about it is though, I wanted this front panel to cover up all of it. So I do flush routing after I do the veneer, after I put the veneer on each panel. I put each panel on and then I flush mount it. So in order to get this one to flush over all of these, because there's a tiny little overlap, you have to cut this one and then not put it on. So you cut this one, leave it off and then start on the top and then I went down the side and went underneath. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but that's how I did it, okay? So this is what the veneer looks like, okay? This is peel and stick and it has uh, 3M adhesive on the back. There's other ways you can do it. You can get paper backed, you can use uh, contact cement to put on there. All sorts of other things, okay? But I use that because it's the quickest and easiest, all right? So real simple, all right? So what you wanna do is measure your front, okay? 
And that is uh, eight and three quarters. All right. So I, I usually I use a overlap. Make sure you overlap. All right. So I'll cut the strip uh, about nine and a half. Okay. That'll give me enough overlap. Okay. So now we're cutting a strip nine and a half inches wide. Okay. And then the only thing we need to do is go. All right. How tall is it? It's 14 by 12 by 14 by 12. Okay. It's 14 plus 14 is 28. 12 plus 12 is 24. So 28 plus 24 is well, 52. So then I add a couple inches over that. So let's say 54 or 55. Uh, I like to be safe because I've shorted myself on veneer before. All right. So what you do is you take that number, the nine and a quarter or nine and a half, and then you cut a piece that is 54 or 55 inches long. Okay. So let's do that. All right, so what do you want? What do you want to do is, I don't know, find a piece that you like the looks of. Now, bear in mind that you're going to have to cut out a woofer and a tweeter. So find a piece, um, and actually, this piece is not 55 inches because I already did the other one. So I'm actually going to have to cut two strips of nine and a half, but that's fine because the one that doesn't match, I'll just put that on the bottom, and I'll be fine. All right. So what I do is take a scissors. That's right. Good old fashioned, decent scissors. Probably not your kid's scissors. I actually had a really good, like industrial scissors. That's a wood, that's a rolling pin. We're going to get to that later. All right. So I, um, why do I have two tape measures? That's funny. Usually I can't find one tape measure. All right. So you take your tape measure. What I do is I bring it out and then I set it a little bit wider then nine and a half we'll go to 11 all right so set it there and then i just put it at the edge okay is there better ways to do this absolutely so then i put my scissors underneath and i slide that down and i sit oh we're gonna have to do this i simply kind of eyeball it and then just start cutting okay and then I'll slide my tape measure and I'll keep cutting, just keeping it pointed at that nine and a half inch point. There we go. It's getting real bad. That's all right. It doesn't matter. If you leave yourself enough slack, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can just trim it up later. Okay. We're getting hung up on the, the blue shower curtain. No, it's not a blue shower curtain. The blue ironing board material. All right, and then just go like this, and then keep cutting it, okay? And then cut it for 55 inches or however many inches you need, okay? That's all you gotta do, just cut it. You got the measurements, all right? I'm gonna turn this off, cut the rest of it, and then I'll show you how to put it on the speaker. Okay, so now we have our strip. Should be 55 inches long or 54 or however big your speaker is around plus two or three inches just to be safe um, this one is not because i don't have the length but that's fine doesn't matter i'll match it up or uh i'll mismatch it on the bottom and nobody can see it all right so now we're gonna look okay so this speaker and this is a css Crichton, is about 14 actually 14 and an eighth all right so I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to say eh, 14 and a quarter heavy. That means a little bit more than 14 and a quarter. All right. And I found what direction I want the grain to go. Just like this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to cut 14 and a quarter across here. But I'm going to take that panel and I'm going to put it to the side because I don't want to start with that panel. I want to finish with that panel so that it looks all nicey nicey on the front. What did I do with my scissors? What did I do with my scissors? Here they are. Sorry. Here they are. All right. And again, you don't have to be perfect if you're giving yourself enough slack and anybody that says oh you shouldn't do it this way they've probably done it like 75 times or 100 times and they know exactly what you're doing but if you're doing it for the first time give yourself a little bit of slack 
literally and then it doesn't have to be perfect you, you get your router and you you fix things up with the router all right because even if you're perfect at cutting this stuff uh, chances are it's not going to be perfect when you put it on all right there's always going to be variables what you can do to eliminate those variables or mitigate them is to give yourself a little bit of extra slack just like this yeah you're committed once you make that first cut so it's you can always cut more off but you can't add it back on okay so again if this is your first time give yourself a break give yourself some slack that's where that comes from give yourself some slack all right it's much easier to do if you're not trying to actually record it all right i'm just gonna go across eyeball it all right let's see i short myself yeah maybe no i'm good 14 yeah i'm good i'm good all right it'll be close on this side all right so now we have our front panel i'm gonna go right here all right and it's perfect okay but again we want to put this one aside and then we're going to start here all right so now i'm going to simply measure this it's 12 inches okay and when we do this panel we want to make sure again we give ourselves a little bit of slack because number one i didn't cut this thing with a straight edge um and number two well, i'm actually cutting from the wrong side i didn't cut this thing with a straight edge so it's not going to be straight and then two it's always good to give yourself a little bit of slack give yourself some slack All right, so we'll go 12, and then uh, maybe right there, a little bit, 12 and a quarter inch, heavy, 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 heavy. So you make a few cuts, go back, and make sure you're good. And you cut it some more, and I'll go back. Yep, that's fine. Now I'll just cut it the rest of the way. Now, if you want perfection and you want like the perfect grain lineup, yeah, you're probably going to want to do something else. But I, um, it's been fine the way I've done it like this. Um, you can still line up the grain, and I mean, I couldn't tell a difference. All right. Now we only have one more piece, and that is. 14 all right so yeah that's just enough to finish it out okay so now i'm gonna have to cut another piece uh for the bottom all right so and then you do the same thing for the sides all right i already cut out sides yesterday so how you do this and i'm not going to redo this one because this is actually done but how you do this is I think this is our first one. No, this is our second one. Yeah, this is our first one. All right. So you line it up with a little bit of slack, and then you want to make sure you have slack on both sides and just a bit of slack on the sides. And then you just kind of position it uh, where you want it to start. Obviously, if you're starting it straight, you want the grain to go up. But guess what? Nature doesn't grow in straight lines. So if you mess it up, don't get all upset about yourself. All right, and then what I do is on the back, we'll peel back at about an inch. And then, of course, you want to make sure that the um, surface is all clean, uh, don't have a lot of sawdust on it. Okay, but the cool thing about veneer is even if you have a little bit of overlap on the sides or whatever, guess what? This covers it up. So I'll peel back about an inch, I lay it down kind of get it in place and this is more important when you're putting the other panels on just to match it up and then i just kind of stick it down and then if i have to move it with one finger if i have to move it a little bit i do and then since i have the back peeled a little bit i just peel a little bit on that side put some pressure there peel a little bit on that side put some pressure there and so on and so forth until you got the whole panel on there and then i'll take a rolling pin I'll take the back of the adhesive paper 
and then I will put pressure real, real hard, lean into it, put a little elbow grease into it, real, real hard, and I'll just push it all the way through, okay? If you do get an air pocket, it's not the end of the world, um, and I didn't get any air pockets on the other ones. Uh, you can put a little slit in it, in the, in the grain vertically, and just kind of work that air out, all right? And then just shove it back down. Um, also, if it dries, you can apply some heat with an iron to get it to stick back down. But don't put the iron directly on here. Use something like that or paper towel or something. Okay. And then you're pretty much done. Okay. Then it gets real interesting because now you have to cut out your holes. There we go. You have to cut out your holes. Just take a, take a knife or nail or whatever, poke that in and kind of pull out to the side and using a router you can use an exacto knife or anything or something like that not going to look very good but you can do it that way i use a router and then i bring it into the middle and then i route a circle now here's the thing with this stuff it's got adhesive on the back so it did gum up my router a little bit so after a couple of panels i had to kind of turn the router off peel that adhesive off of there and then do it again if you have rabbits and rabbit is whatever it's called it's when you have a circle but then you also have it flushed out a little bit so that your actual driver can rest flush mount to the baffle you have to get even another tool and that's uh these little tiny these little tiny things right here i don't know if you can see that oh, trust me it is this all right, so it's a little router bit that doesn't stick all the way down. It doesn't have a bearing on it. And then you can route out the rest of the circle, okay? It, unfortunately, this is the best way to do MDF. And I'm sure there's other ways to do MDF, but in, in actuality, it is the shortest and most not wanting to, Put your fist through a plate glass window way of finishing mdf all right and then you can put whatever coating stain whatever this is cherry it looks pretty good uh you can go on amazon and get stuff a lot cheaper uh, this was expensive this was like 80 bucks uh, for the peel and stick you can go on amazon and find 24 by 96 or entire sheets i got an entire sheet from css audio but I had to put wood glue on the back of that. Then I had to wood glue all over the speaker, let that dry, then do another coat all over the speaker, and then let that dry, and then put it on there, put an iron on there, and melt the glue back together. And guess what? It didn't. It still didn't do as good as this, and I had to keep going back, all right? For me, this is the quickest and easiest way to finish an MDF speaker, and it still looks good. Okay. So, if you want to support the channel, you can subscribe. We just went over 25,000 subscribers. You can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheapaudioman. Every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms. We also have patron-only content. We also have a patron-only Facebook group where I posted pictures of this. You can also buy stuff from Amazon on my links, and I'll get a small commission. You don't pay anymore, but I'll get a commission. You can also sign up for Amazon Music HD for free. Click on the link, scroll down to the bottom, click Try HD. You get three months for free. I get a couple of dollars. I have playlists in the description. My test track playlist, Satanic Panic, Leg Warmers. I need to work on some others, okay? So, yeah, this is what you get. And if I can do it, you can do it. Don't freak out. Just give, your, give yourself some slack, all right? And you'll be fine. So thanks for watching. With all that, I don't binge watch anything. Binge listen on your freshly veneered speakers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm that cheap audio man.